Hey guys, I've been playing a lot of The Witcher 3 again and I thought about making a quick build guide that will hopefully be useful to new players. There are a lot of guides out there that focus on the end game, but not that many that focus on players that are just starting out. So in this video, I'll be doing just that. In the next video, I'll show you how this build evolves once you get to the higher levels, so stay tuned for that. Okay, before we get started, let me just go over what the purpose of this build and this video is. The build I'm about to show you is all about having fun and being able to use a lot of the unique skills and signs while also having plenty of health and attack power. So this isn't an OP build that's tailored to get the absolute maximum damage out of every swing. It's not about min-maxing your stats. You can definitely play Death March with it though but if you're looking for a fully focused build that's purely tanky or all about critical hits, then this isn't it. If that's what you're looking for, then I will leave a couple of links down below in the video description of extremely powerful great builds for maximizing damage, which are awesome for playing Death March. But, you know, if you're looking for something fun and enjoyable that makes use of most abilities and just is a ton of fun to play. This will make Broken Bones fairly easy. It will make Death March playable. And if you want, you can tweak it for more survivability if you want to. I will be commenting on that later in the video. So yeah, I'll be showing the early game build, which is a level 30 build with access to all the standard ability slots. And then I'll show you guys how the build evolves once you get access to mutations the rune right and more skill points. That will be in the next video. Before we get started, however, please check out the other videos on the channel if you like this one and leave your comment down below if you enjoy this build or if you want to share your own setup. Okay, let's get started. Now, while researching this build, I thought about making it revolve around the use of the Quen active shield ability, which restores health whenever you get hit. The problem with that ability is that it makes gameplay extremely boring because you're always pausing your fight to pop the shield to regain your health and running away in order to use it again. Also, once you get to Skellige, you gain access to the Echidna Decoction, which will pretty much make that skill completely obsolete. So instead of going for that, I opted for increasing overall health and focusing on a few useful signs and sword damage. Now, trust me when I say that using 6 slots for signs instead of 3 results in an extremely underpowered build. Dealing proper damage becomes a major problem, so battles tend to last much longer, which results in you using the active shield much more to get your energy back. And overall, I don't think it's a very fun build to play. If you want to try it out, this is what I would go for. But yeah, I just don't think it ends up being a very fun build to play. Okay, on to the build. Now, I'm showing this build with some of the skill points missing on purpose to show what it would look like if you're still building this around level 30. So, first off, we get the buff for using medium armor to get increased stamina regeneration, which will allow you to use signs and special moves more often. Then we go for Acquired Tolerance, which will boost your available toxicity points in proportion to the amount of alchemy recipes you know, so make sure to get as many recipes as possible early in the game. I don't think there's any build out there that doesn't use this skill, it's really good. This will allow us to use two decoctions at once and several potions without worrying too much about toxicity damage. Then we get Heightened Tolerance, which we're actually only getting to get access to Tissue Transmutation. You should, of course, equip Heightened Tolerance while you're building up to this, because it's also really good. Once you're able to switch to Tissue Transmutation, you should definitely do so, because it will add up to a thousand vitality points for each decoction that you use, so that's two thousand vitality over a roughly 6,000 vitality base build that you'll be adding, which is a massive amount. Next up, we have our signs, 
will be taking dilution which is great for stunning single targets and it's also really useful during dialogue options. Also using dilution during dialogue options will almost always provide additional experience so that's also an added bonus. Okay now we could go for Ard, Igni or Quen but I choose to pick Yirden if I don't know that's the way I pronounce it so sorry if that's the wrong way. Anyway, the reason for going with Erden is that the alternate sign is incredibly handy against monsters and it also destroys any oncoming arrows, so that makes it also incredibly useful against human enemies. It does however take a long time to cast, so make sure you drop it whenever you're about to start a fight. It works incredibly well against specters and it will also hit enemies with decent damage and it will also stagger them allowing you to land more attacks. Getting sustained glyphs will make both versions of Erden last longer and be more powerful. You also get around 30% slowdown for enemies which is also really useful. Also thanks to the runestones I have equipped I'm getting 100% chance of catching enemies on fire with Igni and dropping them with Ard, so the signs remain very powerful and useful in this build even though you're not getting too many of them. Next we spend our remaining points in both the fast attack and strong attack trees. This is so each attack deals a decent amount of damage and you get both Whirlwind and Rend which are great skills to have and extremely fun to use. In case you don't know you can spam Rend if you have the timing down by just holding the strong attack button for close to a second to a second and a half and this works great against almost every single enemy in the game. Now you could get other skills and maybe focus on either fast attacks or strong attacks but I personally really enjoy using both of them so that's what I'm going with here. Okay in terms of equipment you should get either the superior woven gear or the griffin gear. Wolven Skull gear will provide buffs to both attack power and sign intensity while Griffin focuses mostly only on sign intensity. I'm using Wolven though because I really don't like the way Griffin armor looks. It's, I don't know, it looks horrible to me and the difference isn't massive in terms of buffs so you could go with whatever you like the most. I will say however that the Grandmaster Griffin armor gets an amazing bonus which allows you to cast signs for free with a basically a two for one deal. You cast your first sign and then you can cast another one without using stamina which is amazing. That's what I'm actually using for the higher level build but I also use a mod that makes it so the Wolven armor has the griffin stats so that way I get the look of the Wolven armor with the griffin stats because I just I just really don't like the way that armor, that griffin armor looks. If you have all six parts equipped, which at higher levels you probably won't because of the swords, they are better swords, steel swords and silver swords than any of the witcher schools have to offer. But if you're not there yet, having all four armor pieces and both swords will make your Irden signs absolutely massive in size and they also provide buffs while you're in them. So if you want to focus more on science, that can be a lot of fun. Definitely pick up the Griffin armor. In terms of runestones, I'm working with 10% freeze chance against enemies with my silver sword and 10% for burn with the steel sword. The 10% burn chance is amazing for steel swords considering that almost all humans or animals are susceptible to it. Now on the armor I have two greater Quen runestones, four Ard and one Igni and this is because since we're not investing any points in them it's a way to balance them and make them powerful enough to be used anyway instead of wasting you know skill points on them. Now these buffs will increase the range of Ard significantly and it also buffs Igni enough to give you a 100% burn chance which is basically what you want from that skill. In terms of decoctions you should be using Ekimara and Echidna. The Echidna decoction is probably the best in the game since it restores health 
whenever you consume stamina which is basically whenever you cast a sign or use one of your special attacks. Echimera regenerates vitality with damage dealt which is also great for survivability. Now if for whatever reason you still don't have one of these, the Night Wraith decoction is also incredible. It adds 50 vitality for each foe slain until you meditate or fast travel. This adds up really fast if you're questing or facing multiple enemies and before you know it you'll have 1000 more vitality points or more. Another great decoction is Water Hag which deals 50% more damage when you're at full health. If you're good with dodging you might just use Echidna and Water Hag because the 50% damage bonus is absolutely massive. Now if you have enough toxicity points available you can also drop a thunderbolt for additional damage boost and you can also keep a white Raffords decoction equipped to gain back some vitality if you're struggling in a fight. Or you could substitute one of the red skills for undying which will basically save you from death if you have any adrenaline points available which in a fight should be most of the time. Okay that will be all. Now you might not like using Irden, in that case you should go for Ard or Quen or Igni as I mentioned before. But me personally I really like the way it works and I really like not having to worry about arrows whenever I'm fighting humans. So that's why I tend to use it a lot. If you need survivability use the Ekimara and Echidna decussion combination. If not use Echidna and Water Hag. As I mentioned, the damage bonus is incredible. And let me know what you think. If you're playing Witcher 3, if you're starting out or if you're going back to it and you use this build, just let me know if you like it, if you enjoyed it. And if you don't, then just leave a comment. I'm always open for constructive criticism. So if there's anything that you would change or do different, please let me know. I hope you liked the video. My next video will be about the evolution of this build, so until then, thanks for watching.